What's up, Miniatures Paintbrush Legion? This is Rob, your host, and today we're going to talk about painting up the XV25 Stealth Battle Suit. Let's go down to Tabletown. <music> Alrighty, folks, we're going to start off with Steinal Res White Primer. I do like Steinal Res because it is self leveling, and that's really important because I make errors all the time, and this sign of fixes it. I like using an airbrush in this stage because it does not clog up anything. Uh, for the rest of the tutorial, it's going to be brush, but I'm just doing this. This can be done with a rattle can if you'd like to. I just like the control that an airbrush gives you. So therefore, I have them all airbrushed when it comes to priming it at least. And you're going to see that there's a lot of sub-assemblies going on over here. Uh, they are assembled, but there are sections of it that are apart. And this just helps me for a multitude of reasons. Uh, one, because the endorphins I get from uh, building as I paint it and I feel accomplishment. Um, I'm going to start off with model color black. Another thing is, it helps me reach areas a little more easily than if I were I, I was not sub-assembling. So that's another thing. So in defense of sub-assemblies, although some people think that I am pretty extreme when it comes to sub-assembles, it just makes me comfortable when I paint something up in a sub-assembly because uh, I just think it's an easier method for me. Uh, it does take a little bit more time. To put together but i think once i start painting i'm actually quicker in the end uh totally all right so i'm going to use model color black and the reason why i'm using model color black is because of all the blacks that i've tried model color black seems to be the maddest truest black uh that i have in my collection so therefore i kind of rely on it it's sort of like the staple for me when it comes to black true black now i can use Steinal res primer but the thing about Steinal res primer yes it's self-leveling and yes it is black but it's more of a blue black so you have to watch out some blacks are just not created equal i do remember using vallejo game color black and for me it wasn't truly matte black it was more semi-gloss black and then after a while it kind of globbed up on me and i just stopped using it it started really messing with my brushes too i don't know what kind of reaction happened there but it just did <laughs> and then i was just like okay that's fine oh um so I just got the uh, combat patrol for the orcs and I have quite a bit of orcs. In fact, I have an entire army on sprue when it comes to orcs and uh, I do have the codex, although I don't know if I'll be able to use that codex, but I'm okay with that. I'm really not opposed and I know this is going to be really bad for a lot of people you're probably going to freak out and if you think otherwise just leave a comment down uh <laughs> let me know what you think about this but i'm not generally opposed of using an old codex uh and and playing an old edition of warhammer 40k as long as my partner is willing to pay play that older edition of 40k so i don't generally throw away my rule books so um if i wanted to play that i can and i have the opportunity to and just because GW has the new hotness. It doesn't mean it's better. Um, not necessarily. You know, it could be like they're trying to make improvements and talk, listening to the feedback of what's going on. But, you know, the way it is right now, it's starting to get that bloat, you know, and it's just getting a little bit too too over thought i guess uh i do wish the activations would change uh and like i said in the last video i was thinking about playing a game of 40k with alternating activations i know this is crazy 
this is crazy. And I do revolutionize things. And of course, I'm going to get that person who's like, no, you can't do it because it's not in the rule box. And well, I'm not playing a tournament or anything like that. And I think it would improve the game. So I think that when I play, I'm going to talk to my opponent and we can decide what we decide and have some fun. Uh, and this way, you don't get that sense of, oh, I didn't get first turn. Now half my army is blown away off the, the field. Especially if you guys are playing against Tau. Because Tau's fighting and shooting ability, I mean, if you make it the third turn, they say, then you're not playing Tau correctly. You know, <laughs> because by, by, by third turn, the game should be just about determined. Uh, when you're playing Tau and if you have an open uh, field because uh, the firepower is just enormous and then you try to fight back and there's like a bunch of little drones soaking up all that damage so it's like you can't even hit anything even with your fire force so it's interesting so I think that alternating activations would be a lot more interesting uh, and <laughs> really um, I think a lot more fun too so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do play a game now I do have my space wolf army and I am I have a quite a large Tau army now and I'm just waiting for the codex to drop and then I think because I don't own a Tau codex uh, at all so uh, I think that when the codex drops I'll get that and uh, possibly I'll try to play a uh, homebrew alternating activations game of 40k and probably be open play or something like that and it'll just be you know me maybe my wife would join me i don't know 40k seems to be very bloaty and i don't know if she'd be down for that maybe i can i can convince her to be able to do that that'd be amazing if i could so Anywho, I am painting black. I'm going to get to what's on the screen here. I am painting black ever so carefully. You notice that uh, I am really taking my time painting this black. It feels great. It feels great to, you know, not just to get it done, but uh, to, to get it done to a level that I'm happy with. So I, I don't mind taking my time. I like fishing. I take my time with fishing. I take my time uh, with painting. I take my time. And the results are somewhere where I'm happy. And that's all that matters because that's what this hobby is all about is being happy. Whether it's playing the game, painting, uh, modeling, or any, any aspect of the hobby. It's meant for enjoyment. And if you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. So there's that. All right, time for the body of this stealth battle suit. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to uh, create, I already have two units of this, and I have a third unit on the way. And the third unit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a painting tutorial where they're coming out of their stealth. This is a stealth battle suit for people who have not and just clicked onto this and don't have Tau and no, don't know how these suits work. These and the ghost kill, what they do is they have this camouflage. So it's like uh, if you know the Predator, um, the movie, where there's this alien that, I mean, it looks like see-through, like it's see-through, like camouflage. And um, what what I'm going to do is a lot of people have done this. It's like, almost like a movement when it comes to Tao that they're coming out of it. But it's like it's like a, a, a blue white or, or it can be um white or, or purple line uh that's very bright that just like comes down and scans straight through so i'm going to do a video on my take on that uh it's uh since my since my um bases are sandy bases and um i'm going to do a desert theme so i have to i'm looking at pictures of deserts and I'm wondering what kind of medium that I should use. Should I use oil paints? Should I use acrylic paints? Um, how much blending am I going to do? Am I going to do a layering? Uh, how much stippling am I going to use? Like, I'm starting to think about all these kinds of things because, you know, I, I want to use all the tools in my toolbox. And um, you can paint over oil paint, but you do have to make sure it's dry. So uh, that's another thing. A hundred percent dry, which could take a month or two. It depends on the oil paint you use, really. So you know, keep that in mind um, that it can be like that. So um, 
I'm gonna have that video. I don't know when it's gonna come up. I do have footage on it, and uh, I'm painting it right now. It's on my, it's on my desk. Um, I also have a freehand towel video. So I do this like graffiti style towel on the side of a of a path piranha, no pathfinder, devilfish. That's it. <laughs> on the side of a devilfish, right? Because this is my second devil fish and I wanted to do something different so I always toyed around with the idea of graffiti style uh, art or freehand on the side of it like somebody just you know got a little bit of a rattle can and, and try to you know make it kind of cool and I, I finished that and I do have the footage for that and I, I, I do do these videos uh, well in advance and the reason why is because you know when I don't have any content to upload um, since I am doing the rain and hell stuff uh, for the channel when I don't have any content I have a video in between to kind of break it up and like my safety net uh, so to speak but uh, you know I have I need to get back on the painting uh, table because I haven't really painted for a little bit uh, the school season started so I've been focusing a lot of my energy on teaching and teaching has been well constantly involving um, so it, it has been taking a lot of my time and energy to be focused on that so I try to give you guys as much as I can of myself but um, you know maybe one day I might not have a video come out in a week and hopefully you can stick by me and realize that I am going to have a video out although I've been really good at getting a video out every week so I'm kind of proud of myself so so far so good but when I run out of these tau tutorials um, it's gonna be kind of rough so <laughs> I'm gonna try to see what I can do there um, I do have some stuff to paint up for rain and hell so Nicole and I can use that for those of you who haven't seen any rain and hell stuff my wife has agreed to learn how to play a war game and to war game with me for the channel and uh, a non-war gaming person, war gaming, and um, she's doing pretty well right now. I'm not going to give you any spoiler alerts. If you want to check out those videos, I do have a playlist called Rain in Hell. Uh, and I have two test videos in the beginning. And then well, what happened was is that I had two test videos in the beginning. And then I had to take a hiatus from it because the partner that I had uh, bailed out on me completely. And uh, another person said they were going to... Um, take up the mantle but then you know they were super late and you know I, I, I'm all about punctuality like my time is valuable I need to get stuff done and I don't have all the time in the world to be waiting around for people I'm just that way so there's that you know and um, so my wife saw that I was really sad and uh, <laughs> took up the mantle and said you know what i'm gonna learn how to pay this and we're gonna do battle reports together i will be your partner and i'm like you are amazing and she is amazing and hopefully she likes it enough that she wants to continue playing even after we're done with uh our campaign that we're doing it's a full campaign so it's gonna be it's amazing actually all right time for the shoulder pads uh again some model color black and you to see how i really uh get the fine details and use brush control my pinky is touching my thumb and i'm using that as a brace and i'm ever so slightly getting closer to the edge you know i'm just pushing the brush to the edge uh and getting that in and that's a technique that you can use pushing the brush to an edge so you can get that um and it gives you a lot more brush control so it's pretty it's pretty cool to be able to balance and to do that now my, my pinky is on my forefinger also getting some balance it's really important to get a lot of different angles here so here I have the guns uh, I don't know what the name of this gun is but it's not the leaders gun it's the uh, subordinates gun so I, I think they look cool they're very unique uh, I don't know how old this kid is but uh, I think it's pretty cool so I'm really happy with it uh, it's a lot of fun to build, a lot of fun to paint. Uh, the gaps aren't crazy. Uh, there are some gaps there, uh, which is kind of like tough for me to get to, but I keep on trying, you know, keeping on, fighting that gray. Uh, all right, so time for the leader's gun, which is pretty cool. Some kind of blaster. Uh, I like that. I, I <laughs> What I do is usually I paint uh, some glowing energy in there. Uh, just like I do lenses. And by the way, 
I am not going to do a tutorial and show you how to do lenses in this video. And the reason why I'm not doing that is because I have an entire video dedicated to lenses uh, that I'll show you at uh, close to the end of the video. I should have one of them pop up things uh, so you can see how I do lenses if you want to see a quick and easy way to do lenses. And um, yeah, something I don't show you as per se. And um, yeah, that and the, the bases, because I also have another video on how to do bases. <laughs> I do. Uh, so how I do desert sand bases. So I don't include those two in this video because uh, I don't want to be really redundant, but I will give you a link to those two videos towards the end of this video. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll pop it in here. <laughs> um, so yeah, back on painting the Tao, it's been a struggle for me. It's been a struggle. I've been burning out when it comes to the Tao. So getting the motivation to fight the gray, to, to go back into the saddle and paint some more Tao. And it's not that it's difficult. It's just so time consuming. <laughs> it just is. Um, because there's so many models, although uh, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I have currently all that I have left is, uh, two battle force boxes and, uh, I have an apocalypse box set. So those are the three things that I really need to get done. And then I have some forge world stuff, uh, nothing too major, um, a battle suit, a big one and, uh, not, not an ultra big one. I mean, I wanted that one, but I don't think I can, I don't think I can get that. I don't think, unless they came out with a plastic one. But anyway, if they did, the price would be so hefty. I don't know if I'd be able to afford it at this point. And I have enough minis. So, <laughs> so uh, when it comes to brush painting, you can be a little sloppy in the beginning to get the middle out, but then you have to slow it down for the edges just to make sure you get it right. And, um, Time is on my side here because I, I feel like I should have diluted this a little more than I had right there, but it, the flow aid is helping. I do use flow aid uh, on my web palette. There's always some kind of flow aid on my web palette and you can use different kinds of flow aid. It just helps uh, the brush stay hydrated and the paint keep moving off the brush. Um, so I always keep some in my web palette so it can get hydrated and uh it can have that flow improver vibes to it so flow aid or flow improver and you can use airbrush flow improver i use vallejo airbrush flow improver but i also use liquitex uh flow improver flow aid so um either one it just works and helps it just if you have a wet palette i use a masterson wet palette it's uh economically for me the best choice and um i use um, the flow aid on top of the web palette just to get it going uh, right there. So right now you can see the web palette back there. Just um, if you get a Masterson's web palette, throw away the paper that comes with it. It's meant for heavy body acrylic, not for our type of acrylic for miniature painting, unless you go to use heavy body acrylic and then keep it. But I kind of tossed it and got Reynolds um, parchment paper because the parchment paper allows the water to seep through. It soaks really well and it keeps your paint wet. Now, a common misconception is that wet palette just makes your paint never uh, break apart or, you know, decompose, but that's not true. Your paint will go bad. For me, my paint separates like after a day, like it just separates and it just becomes blah. I got to put some more paint on there. So, you know, it does take that. And I think because it gets so saturated that, you know, the, the pigment holder, the medium that holds the pigment together breaks apart after a while and then it becomes a hot mess and just about unusable uh, but when i put new paint in there before it even gets hydrated uh completely i take some of the old paint that's watered down uh, that's for lack of a better term and I, I integrate it with the current paint right there so this way i can dilute it all in the same time you know throw some flow approver in there and then i get to back to painting all right, uh, this is for the drones. I also have a video on drones. Like, if you wanna see how I paint drones, 
Uh, so I'm not going to paint drones in here either. So a lot of things I'm not doing in this video. <laughs> That's how I can keep it to a half an hour. Um, but I do have separate videos for each one of these. And I really don't want to be redundant. And for all the people that have already seen those videos, I don't want you to re-see my same exact techniques over and over and over again. But I'll just get straight and, and cut to the chase and talk turkey here. Temple Guard Blue is next, and I use Amareth Blue from Fantasy and Games, scale 75, and then War Colors, and these are the War Colors, and the other one are uh, gel-based mediums, and then FW Dalarani Ink White, and some, of course, Flow Improver. Um, and what we're going to do here is we are going to do some edge highlighting. So I dip it into Flow Improver. Uh, I go into a temple card blue. I pull some white in there and mix it up. Some more temple card blue. Uh, and then some amaranth blue I have in there as well. And when I get a nice little light blue kind of a tone to it, and that's what I want for this edge highlighting, uh, you can play around with different colors if you'd like to. So now I'm wicking off some of the uh, moisture from the brush, and then I'm just going to edge highlight. Now, when you edge highlight it, you use the side of the brush, not necessarily the tip of the brush. If you're using the tip of the brush, it's called freehand. If you're using the side of the brush, then it's called edge highlighting. So there's that. And if you're really good at freehanding and have uh, an incredibly steady hand, then you know go for it. But I like to use the edge of the brush, not the tip of the brush. And painting or edge highlighting on black is so good because if you make a mistake, it's so easy to go back and clean up your mistake with the original black color. I mean, black covers everything very well. So yeah, it's very little stress and a little risk for a great reward. And I want to go for a little bit of a Tron kind of theme. And this is one reason why I'm glad I left the arms off because right now I can really get into the body sections and not have to worry about it. And, you know, go sub assemblies for just that purpose right here to be able to get thoroughly all the edge highlighting that I need, all my edge highlighting needs without it uh, really decimating. So I'm going to get really close up, get brutally close. Uh, so you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, hopefully I can stay in focus. That's that's always the challenge. All right, again, using the side of the brush. Now, it is very close to the tip of the brush, isn't it? But uh, it is still the side of the brush and not the tip of the brush. And I'm just going to edge highlight straight out. Yeah, and honestly, it, it looks so much better. Uh, there was a point where I just didn't edge highlight because I didn't feel it was necessary but it just makes things pop. So I do encourage people to edge highlight. And this one, usually I just edge highlight the tops where the light catches would be. Uh, and if you do an OSL where the light catches would be, I would definitely edge highlight that. But this one I wanted to go for a Tron look and that means the lights emanating from all the edges. So I'm gonna go very GW type style and edge highlight all the ends right there uh, just to be a, just to get it uh, looking like Tron. So, and it was a lot of fun to do because with that flow aid, it makes it a little easier uh, to edge highlight and to get really great results with very little effort. And I, I do like getting great results with very little effort. I mean, I do. I mean, maybe that's me being lazy. It could be. <laughs> it could be for certain. So there's that. You can see how it's coming along right there. Every edge you see, you need to edge highlight uh, if you're doing in this method right here. Now the arms are on and time to paint some Mechanica Standard Gray and that's from GW Paint. So we have Mechanica Standard Gray uh, just going in and you like to do a lot of, you would like to do a lot of coats when it came to Mechanica Standard Gray. You really don't want to thick it on there because they show brush strokes. This paint definitely shows brush strokes if you're not thinned out. So I do more than just one coat. I certainly do more than one coat. Uh, sometimes I do two to three coats, uh, but this is kind of easy. There's just a tab there. And I like to do, very, uh, do some variation here. And I pick a different rung of the ladder just to just to paint up and a different style because each one of my um, paint jobs have to be has to be unique in some fashion. Every unit I paint 
has to be unique from uh, the other unit that I paint. I want to make each in each unit a special flower, and that just has that helps me add variation to uh, whatever my painting project is. It's important to have that variation for me because I get bored really quickly and I have to do things to actually trick myself in order to stay motivated and to work diligently at my project. And right now with this long haul project, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I don't think that I'll be able to finish in the year. This is my new army for the new year for 2021. And I really don't see myself finishing within the uh, till the end of the year. So I don't know if I'll be able to do that, um, which means I'll have no new army for the new year for next year. Um, but, you know, that can be a good thing because I can go back to armies that I still have models for, like my space wolves. I do have a lot of space wolves uh, stuff that I can be painting up because I've really haven't painted too much of the Primaris Space Wolves. I mean, I've done one for my combat patrol unit, uh, which fell apart as well. Um, but, you know, I had a great time with a combat patrol while it lasted. And tend to, uh, typically with my groups that I get into in this area, consistency is a very big issue. So uh, they're great for one or two games, but then life gets in the way and they they're just don't play or they play sporadically or whatever, you know, it's just not consistent. Not everybody like everybody's gung ho at us uh, to do a certain thing and then nobody follows through uh, or they have blatant disregard for other people. So it's just really hard to find dependable people. I mean, I, I think that's not just in the hobby. I think that's just lately. Uh, it's, it's hard to find dependable people. So if you found a dependable person in your life, that's a keeper, you know, <laughs> value that person, thank them every day, appreciate people in your life and you won't lose them. Um, take for granted, they'll always be in your life and they'll be gone one day and you will just lament the decision you've made of being a butthead. And this is why I don't try to be a butthead. <laughs> like, um, for special people in my life. Uh, number one, my wife. Number one, my wife. Everybody is like, oh, Rob. And I'm like, yeah, she is absolutely amazing. I know. <laughs> um, not that we don't have issues. Everybody does. It's healthy, too. Um, but we always work them out. We never go to bed angry. We continue. And speaking of which, whenever you have an issue, um, sometimes I... I go into my miniature painting in order to, you know, break out of whatever um, bad thing that's going on in my life or any kind of stress and it de-stresses me. But lately with the Tao, it's been a source of stress. That's why I took a break from it and I started the Rain in Hell content uh, because I was back to back and I needed a break. So there's that. And I've gotten a break, so I'm getting back to it slowly. Although I've done quite a bit of painting tutorials, there's still some models uh, that I have to paint because I still have to paint more Pathfinders and I still have to paint more, you know, Fire Warriors. So, you know, I still have all of those things to paint. And I've already done tutorials on them. So I'm thinking, what can I possibly do to make another video out of those units? So I'm always trying to look for different uh, things to show you. So if I do a, a video tutorial on a unit, I'm not going to do another one on the same unit unless I'm bringing something new to that table, you know, just really changing it up. Mechanicus standard gray is fierce and I'm just looking for different details to add with the Mechanicus standard gray so I'm just gonna add some details here and there uh, again stabilizing my hands hand position is super important and um, I'm using cork right now that I hot glued to cardboard um, and that's what I do with some certain bits uh, I also use nails like a pitcher nails or something like that like you know to hang pictures and um they have a flat head so i can put some poster tack to them and i can get the small little details and the reason why i leave the shoulder pads off is because i like to paint the whole underarm first because sometimes when you put on these shoulder pads they kind of lift up and you see the underneath so i want to make sure the underneath is done and done you know to my standard 
because I'll keep looking at that underneath and saying it's not painted well and it'll bother me for my collection. So yeah, I'm very, very particular about these things. Now I may or may not play 40K sometimes, but, um, but when it comes to the paint job and it's gonna be in my cabinet, I have 100% say in what's gonna go into my painted cabinet. And you have 100% say in what goes into your painting cabinet or into your army or into your collection. Because, you know, don't let other people tell you what to paint, you know? Because I think painting stuff you don't wanna paint only because it's good on the table ruins the joy of the hobby to an extent. So yeah, and then people dread painting and it's like, that's not cool. I don't think that's, I don't think that's fun, you know? So I say paint whatever you love and be happy and then throw it on the table and hopefully you don't have a total jerk on the other side that's gonna blow you off that table. And hopefully you run into me who has a very similar, I just paint a unit cause I think it's cool looking and I don't even know what the rules are yet, but you know, I'll find that when I get to the gaming table. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at when it comes to this stuff. So, so yeah, I want to have multiple armies in, uh, in my house. So this way, if my wife does want to pick up a game, she can pick it up and we can play and have fun. And that's it. <laughs> she tried playing um, Shadespire, Warhammer Underworld. She didn't really like the cards dynamic uh, of it. So, you know, we left it at that. Uh, so I don't think she'll play that, but there are kill team. I do have the new kill team. I do have the old kill team still in the wrapper. I bought it when it was brand new and uh, I never opened it up. So <laughs> I will be opening up that older box because it has some Tau. So that's an excuse for me to just paint it up. I think that's going to be the last bit of my project because at that point I can paint up the uh, Space Wolves um unit that's in there i wonder if it has enough to make the hounds of mordecai and i could just make those uh right there um one other thing i'm going to do i'm thinking about painting up a caradon army and i'm going to use that because once i get three units of let's say infantry or something like that if i got more like intercessors or whatever then you know what am i gonna what am i gonna use that for i'm not really gonna use a whole bunch of just I don't know. I guess I could use a whole bunch of infantry if I wanted to. Okay, going back to the model, uh, I did paint, start painting the drone so I could show you what I do. And here is the accent color, Mephiston on red. Uh, so just painting some things, Mephiston on red. I do like that burgundy red color uh, that it has uh, with Mephiston on red. It is, it is a really great color uh, to have. So, uh, and it's a great base for red because then you can go up from that. You get uh, a brighter red and then mix that up with a uh, ink and then you really make it pop if you want to. Or you can leave it that burgundy and just do some kind of highlights to it. And, you know, it just works. It just works. So adding some spot colors and that red spot color. I do like working with a limited color palette because, you, you know, the guesswork is kind of out. And plus the lenses are that blue and the edge highlighting is a blue having this red which is on the opposite side you know having the cool and the warm kind of play into it really makes it stand out and pop and that's why i love 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 using red and using a limited color palette as well i just have white and the red and the blue white red blue and gray and black that's it <laughs> those are the colors for my towel and it just it's simple and it's refreshing and it works so i'm really happy with it um so yeah uh bought the orcs combat patrol box i i, I moved on from that topic but i want to come back to it and a lot of people have issues with that box because you know it doesn't have enough shooters or you know choppers or whatever it is and honestly I think the figs look cool. I have three boxes of orc boys and I'm just going to add to it with these guys, you know, and whatever, you know, <laughs> who cares? I mean, I don't care as long as the models look cool and I'm having fun painting them. So that's all that matters to me. Um, so yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. So I want to have multiple armies. I want to have multiple armies. Uh, so this way, if Nicole ever wants to pick an army up and play it, we can have some fun with it. And there it is. So I, I, that's pretty much why I have multiple armies and that's, that's about it. 
So just having fun with some Mephisto and Red and painting away and being at peace with this. Uh, and all about that brush control, all about leaning your pinky on uh, different areas and moving around that pill bottle that I have there. And by the way, I fill that pill bottle up with uh, construction sand uh, or little gravel rocks. And this way, you know, that kind of ballast makes it weighted so it doesn't topple over easily. So consider that. If you are using uh, RX bottles or pill bottles, then consider adding some kind of weight to it. I, I don't advise water or any liquid, but um, sand works just nice. I mean, really nicely. Even if it's playground sand or something like that, if you get yourself a bag. Um, do know that there are certain kind of organic materials that could be in those things. So if you want to put it on a tray, uh, it could be one of those um, cooking trays and you just lay out some sand and, and bake it for a little while. I know it sounds funny, but uh, it really does kill all the organisms. And because I put it on 400 degrees for about 10 minutes or 20 minutes, I don't know. That should be enough 400 degrees for anything to, to that was surviving in there to die. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I do uh, sometimes with organic materials that I have. I, I basically cook it, and <laughs> whatever is in there is getting uh, getting done. All right, Mephisto on red, I'm going to do that for the face plates. Now, I do realize that you're supposed to have a leader have a red face plate while the other ones have white face plates. But just for these models here, I think they look so cool with the red that I painted them all red. And in order to differentiate the leader, I actually put a decal on the, the right chest plate of the miniature. And that's going to be his badge or his, yeah, his badge. And the, or stripes or that, that's going to be as identification and not just the red. So it is. I'm going to pop the red face in again. I have a tutorial on how to do lenses. I'm going to pop that in right here. So once you're done with this video, you can check that one out. And if you want to know how I do lenses, uh, also if you want to check out how I do um, how I do bases, uh, then I'm going to put that link up right here so you can check out how i do the bases i think that's uh you can check that out and and if you want to do a desert theme base uh that's how i did it um finally uh if you want to see how i did all my drones i do have a third video that you may want to consider and i'm going to put that one up right here so you can check that one out if you were interested in how to how I do drones. So there's a lot of different things you can check out for the channel, for the tutorial videos, if you want to. Now, last but not least, I am doing um, oil washing, uh, pin washing with a stick pen and or calligraphy pen. So well, not really calligraphy, but just stick pen. Yeah. So I'm using oil washes and I'm using mineral oil, mineral spirits and um, the oil paint and the flow on that thing is so incredible and the thing about oils is that it takes a long time to dry so you can go back and you know clean up any mistakes you did or any overages that you did um just you know i wait an hour uh and then come back and do it or almost an hour maybe half an hour and then i come back and do it and it seems to be suffice that it takes out uh the majority of any kind of leftover ink that i have there and uh well paint that i have there and um it's just i like to w not wait too long because i don't want it to really stain or anything like that or have something that you know will just blur out but even if it does blur out it kind of looks like weathering <laughs> so it's maybe an effect that you can do to look like, like if you have a bullet, bullet hole and then you have that gray streak that goes across if you wanted to uh this might be your your way this and a q-tip <laughs> and just streak it that might be something you want to do uh, or check out. So that's an interesting way. Sorry for any blurriness that happens over here. It's really hard to keep this thing in focus. There it is. So you can see it looks, I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I'm going to go back and paint that middle piece gold. So there's that. And I'm going to paint the top pieces red, but you can mechanica standard gray. We're going to have a little bit of that in there, a little bit of everything. You know, that's, that's how we roll over here. <laughs>
All right, so here are the pictures. All right, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps out the channel. Uh, and you can check out all the new uploads that I do uh, all the time. So, <laughs> well, at least once a week. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something from it. Uh, I really like that you, I'm really honored that you came hang out with me today and watch this video. Thank you so much. I appreciate you beyond words. Uh, you, we have a Facebook group. It's called the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion on Facebook. Uh, you can join and post your progress pictures of what you're working on for your Get It Done Challenge. Um, I do have an Instagram account, although I need to get better at posting pictures there. And I do have a Patreon account. I want to thank my Patreon members, uh, Emily Yasesco and uh, Mike McBroom. Thank you so much for your support. You are amazing and you, you keep my Adobe uh, running so I can edit videos efficiently and 100% of what I make on those channels go 100% back into the channel to make it a better channel. Um, but, you know, the kindest thing you can do is, is share the channel. That's the kindest thing you can do. Um, get the word out about the miniatures paintbrush and uh, we'll grow the community together and that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, so I thank you. So if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.